I'm building a 24 by 34 pole barn right here. We had a backhoe operator come in here and level out the ground a couple days ago. The entrance to the pole barn is going to be right through the garden and through here. It will be uh, three bays. It's going to be big enough to hold a pontoon boat and lawn mowers and one car. And we have to do some transit work first just to make sure it's level. Well, we're going to be using the one on the left. If you have to get a transit to level your property, you can either buy one for a couple hundred dollars or you can uh, rent one and the one on the left was actually at one time a rented transit and uh, we just bought it when they updated their equipment. All of these stakes that we've hammered into the ground just represents uh, spots that we have to put 4x4 four four pressure treated posts. There's a total of 16 of them and we're going to rent an auger and we're going to drill these holes out and concrete the posts in there. That should be about a half a day's project. Our property is far from level, so the backhoe operator had to pile up some dirt here to get it fairly level. I think he raised it about 18 inches, maybe two feet. Using a transit is not that difficult, but we brought in specialist Charles Wellen who was a Forest Service surveyor, among other things for the Forest Service, and he's going to be shooting the transit for us. This is my wife Becky. She's going to be at the other end of the transit. The correct way to hold the scale is right down the middle of her body. Now Charles is going to explain to us exactly how to operate the transit. Okay, a transit is just a telescope and it has crosshairs in it, like a gun sight. And uh, you need to level this platform right here on all four directions like so so that it's level no matter which way you turn your telescope you're going to be looking at the same level the horizontal crosshair in there will tell you exactly how far above or below where you were before based on the pole that Becky is holding and uh, we know how level the place is and we're within two inches overall. Charles took a reading with Becky standing in this corner and then this corner and the two lower corners. So let's check with Charles on his findings. Yeah, I think you're going to have a fairly level floor and you're not going to have to do a whole lot of raking around to get it that way. So your uh, backhoe operator did a good job. This is the basic lumber that we're going to be using just to start this pole barn. Uh, we've got a bundle of furring strips, one by two furring strips four eight-foot pressure-treated four-by-fours, four ten-foot pressure-treated four-by-fours, and the other eight are all 12-foot pressure-treated four-by-fours. And of course we got our stakes that we staked it off with. I got two tickets here. One is $140.76. The other one is $164.72. So about $300 worth of materials. Then we'll get all the poles set and then we'll go from there. I hope you can tell something about this. It's just a hand sketch. This shows roughly what this pole barn is going to look like. I mentioned we have to put a pontoon boat in. Um, it's kind of a homemade houseboat pontoon boat. So it does have to be high enough for that. 
So thanks for watching. On the next video, we're bringing in the auger. We're going to drill the 16 holes, set the 16 poles, concrete them in. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.